Hey everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled with Glitter and I am here with a tag project for you today. You actually may remember this tag project. I posted a photo of it on my blog a few weeks ago for the Essentials by Ellen Holiday 2015 release and I promised a video of it and since I am a woman of my word, <laughs> I'm finally getting around to posting this. Now I'm going to be doing a little bit of embossing and some watercoloring so I'm using kind of a watercolor resist technique. So you saw me just prep the surface of my Tim Holtz cardstock using my EK Success powder tool. That's going to keep the embossing powder from sticking to areas that I don't want it to. And then I'm inking up the Mondo Poinsettia stamp, the larger one in Versamark ink. And I've mounted it to my stamp press. When I have these larger stamps like this, I really find that I get good results when I use my Fiskars compact stamp press. So I'm inking up both of those in the Versamark ink and stamping them onto the smoother side of the Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. And then I'm going to add some Ranger super fine detail gold embossing powder to each of these images, just cover the entire image, and then I'll heat set them with my heat tool. Now when I'm heat setting these, I like to allow my heat tool to heat up just a little bit. I find that I get a little less warping if I can do it rather quickly rather than exposing the paper to more heat than it really needs. So now I have my Kurataki Gansai Tombi watercolors, and I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and I'm going to watercolor these poinsettias using a little bit of some variations of some red. Now I started out with that one on the top and I did not like how pink it was. So I went ahead and moved to the 32 and the 30. Those are the colors of the watercolors that I'm using. And I've added some clean water into a few of those petals. And then I'm just going to start watercoloring these in. Now for the larger portion of these petals, I'm using that more orange color, and then the darker one I'm using to add kind of some shading to it. I really like using a couple of different colors because it gives me a variation in color and adds a little bit of interest to the flower petals as well. So you'll notice also that I'm not working in with the flower petals that are directly connected to each other because sometimes when you add watercolor, to two areas that are touching, the color from one can kind of bleed over into the other, and I really like to have a lot of control over my watercolor, so I'm just kind of going every other petal for now. Now, the cool thing about these watercolors, they are really rich and intense. You can water them down more and get a little bit less vibrant color, but I really like how you can layer them up and get some really intense color with these watercolors. And I got a little bit too much on a couple of those petals, so I just went in with a clean paper towel and sopped up the excess. And once they kind of dried a little bit, I decided I want a little bit more of that deeper color, so I'm going back and layering a little bit more of that deeper color along the center of these flower petals. So while I allow my watercolor to dry, I'm going to go ahead and work on some of the other elements of my tag. I'm using these stitched traditional rectangle tags from My Favorite Things, and I'm using the largest and the second to the largest in that set. And I'm cutting the smaller of the two dies out of the Essentials by Ellen wood grain embossed craft cardstock. And the larger one I'm cutting out of this Tim Holtz metallic cardstock. This has a craft core, so it really coordinates nicely with that craft wood grain cardstock. Now, when I was holding these up, I really didn't like the proportion of these. So what I went ahead and did was a little partial die cutting. I al aligned the stitches that were already cut on the edges of that tag with the stitches on the die, but just shifted it up a little bit to cut a little bit off of the bottom. And that just gave me a little bit more pleasing proportion and it allowed me to keep that stitched detail on the end of that tag as well. So now I have the coordinating dies, the Mondo poinsettia dies, and you can see here, I am apparently really puzzle challenged because I can't ever get these flower dies onto the coordinating stamp right in the first try. I have to always move them around, but when I finally do get them positioned in the right position, I added a little bit of post-it tape to keep them in place, and then I'm going to run them through my Sizzix Big Shot machine. And you can see that when I pop these out here, 
I have these really beautiful clean cut edges. I've got some beautiful watercolor and this is going to make a great statement piece on my tag. Now they're beautiful lined up just kind of flat on top of each other, but I really wanted to add a lot of dimension to this. So I'm adding a little bit of foam adhesive to the smaller of those poinsettias. And then I'm just gonna kind of rotate this around until I figure out kind of what's pleasing to me as far as the alignment and then I'll just push it down there. Now adding this dimension, when I go through at the end, I'm going to actually curl up the flower petals as well. It just adds a lot of life to this flower. Now I realized I had never done the leaves for this flower and it, it really did need them. <laughs> so I went back and I did the same thing. I heat embossed the leaves with some gold embossing powder. And then I'm going to use some more of those Gonsai Tombi watercolors. I'm using the 54 and the 58 to have a couple of different colors of green to watercolor those. And then I'm going to kind of speed along the drying process with my heat tool. And because I was afraid that they weren't quite dry enough, I'm going to go ahead and blot those off with a clean piece of paper in order to keep that color from transferring anywhere else or kind of smudging outside the lines. Then I'll take them over to my die cut machine and I'll run them through so I have the, those perfectly cut leaves to add behind my flower piece. I really wanted to add a, even more dimension to this flower, so to adhere it onto the front of my tag, I'm just adding a little more foam adhesive. Now you'll notice here that I'm only adding it to the left part of this poinsettia, and that's because I'm going to allow the right side to kind of hang over the edge of that tag, and I don't want that foam adhesive to show from the back. Now, I really wanted to add a sentiment to this tag, and I grabbed this Noel stamp from the Mistletoe and Holly stamp set, and I really couldn't figure out where it goes. Now, it comes to me later, but in the meantime, I'm going to work with what I know that I love. And kind of when I get stuck, I go ahead and commit the things that I know I really love, and then kind of go back to those other ideas later. And a lot of times, the right kind of combination or the right idea comes to me as I'm working on it. So I've removed the backer from the foam adhesive on the back of this large poinsettia and I'm adding kind of a messy nest of this DMC light gold thread to the back of it. And I'm going to play with it until I like it because even though it's supposed to be messy, I um, feel like I need some control over this. I maybe have a little bit of some control issues, but that's okay, I can take it out on my crafts all I want, right? <laughs> So I was worried about, once I manipulated and kind of touched that foam adhesive too much, I was worried about it not sticking to that embossed wood grain cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little multi-matte medium to the back of that where that foam adhesive is, and then use that to adhere it onto my tag. And then I know I'm really getting a good um, bond to that embossed wood grain cardstock. Now once again, when I was holding this up, I wasn't feeling like the proportions were quite right. So I've gone ahead and lined up the stitching again along the top part of that tag, but I've shifted this tag die over just a little bit and cut that again. And that made the tag a little bit narrower and it made the dimensions more pleasing to me. And when I got that all cut, I went ahead and added some tape printer adhesive to the back of that wood grain craft piece there and added it on top of the gold piece. Now this tag needs a hole in the top and since these don't cut it, I went ahead and just kind of eyeball the center point with my pencil and then I'm going to use my crocodile tool to punch a little hole in the top of this tag. And I'll use some more of that DMC light gold thread to kind of just thread through the top and you see I have several layers here to kind of give it a little more weight because it's not really a twine, it truly is a thread and it's a little light on its own. Now of course, no Christmas project would be complete without a little bit of sparkle, and so I decided to add some of the Sparkling Clear sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. It's a mixture of the four millimeter and the six millimeter sequins, and I'm just attaching those on with a little of the Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. And that just gives it a little bit of sparkle without taking too much away from that beautiful poinsettia that I've created. So I'm revisiting the sentiment again. I've got everything that I love and it came to me that I decided I wanted to gold heat emboss this beautiful Noel sentiment onto some vellum and just kind of allow it to hang over the edge of the tag just like that flower is. 
So I've prepped the surface of that 43 pound Essentials by Ellen Vellum with my EK Success powder tool. I went ahead and inked it up in some Versamark ink and now I'm just adding that super fine gold detail embossing powder from Ranger. And then I'll heat set that. Once again, really important, especially on vellum, to let your heat tool heat up before you take it to the vellum. And then I can just take this over to my trimmer, trim that down, and then I'll cut the end into a little banner shape here. So I'm just cutting up the center and then cutting from each corner to that center slit. And then I'm going to kind of tuck this behind the layers of the flower. Now I'm going to kind of lift this up and I realized as I was lifting and manipulating this that I really didn't have a good bond between those two layers. So I just picked up that smaller flower once again. I added a little bit more of the multi-medium and the matte finish behind it and I adhered that back on and I'm just going to tuck that sentiment piece up underneath that and allow that multi-medium to keep that in place as well. To finish up the tag, I went ahead and let that multi mat medium kind of sit up and get a really good bond. And then I went back and kind of curled up the petals of these flowers to give it even more dimension. It kind of makes that flower really come to life and make it feel like it's blooming off of the tag. As always, I have links to all the products used in this project in the description at YouTube, as well as over at my blog at sprinkledwithglitter.com where you can see more still shots and get more information. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.